Ah, uh, we are back. You know what? It doesn't look that dirty either. Look at that. Not so bad. It needs a wash, but there's no damage. A lot of people were commenting about there being a Class C in our future or a Class A. And it was fun. And it's the only way to travel in New Zealand. Truly the only way to travel. But man, is it nice to be back in the truck. Let's start it for the first time, see how things go. Oh man, this place is spotless. Yeah. It's Fort Wilderness. We're making reservations for Disney. She come out of break at night in the pink skies. The best time to go through your things is when you've been away from them. Because you're like, I actually don't need these things. Put it on a Yeah. In so many words. Mm -hmm. Are we, do we, are we all good with the pillows? You think, I just, get the cameras out of here, Jessica. I just don't need this right now. <laughs> all right, how's that? Does that look like it's in focus? All right. Welcome to season seven. We are so excited to be here with yes, you. Yes, we are. And to be in the United States and start on what we're calling the heartland. We're going through the middle of this country, finally, yes. with a little detour over to Florida for a bit. Okay? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> and then I think, I think this season, we're going to complete all 50 states. This has been a goal of ours for a long time. I think it's possible. Excited. We're not quite sure on how we're gonna handle the Northeast, but we have a lot of ground to cover this season and we are so excited to share it with you. Yes, but first, you might be asking, why are they wearing matching shirts? I think you know why. <laughs> it's so soft. <laughs> it's so well fitting. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> it is that time again where summer is just before us, at least for most of us. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Michigan, Wisconsin. There's a couple states Indiana. that are lagging behind, but it, it'll be here, we it's promise. Coming. It's coming. But we're excited to share with you this year's Summer to Remember, the theme and the design. Yes. So, like, well, because show everybody. sometimes you need an excuse to just have a little that bit of fun. That is true. So we That's have true. you covered with this t-shirt. Yes. So on the back, different pins, where you're going, because Instagram was the best part of Summer to yes. Remember last year. There were people, their families, all wearing their shirts. Yes. So many people hiking, out with their dog, out with their rigs. Yes, showing off their adventures, going to national parks. Hashtag KYD dogs. Love <laughs> seeing the dogs. The dogs were amazing, the RVs were amazing, the families were amazing, and everybody just having fun. All I mean, I just love some of these macho guys in their keep your daydream, like in their Summer to Remember shirt. It was a blast, and we cannot wait to see where you go this summer. So, as you know, with a Summer to Remember shirt, you use the hashtag Summer to Remember, and then we're able to keep up with you where you're going this summer so that we can, Trish, you still get your, you oh, got your double tap finger I got my ready? double tap finger. Scroll yes. down, double tap. Love what you're doing. <laughs> love it. That is the thing we like most about the Summer to Remember. But the second thing we love most is how it makes the world a little bit smaller. Oh People, my goodness. they have their shirt on. Friendships are made. Yeah, and they see someone in RV Park born. with a Summer to Remember shirt, and they're like, hey, I got the same shirt, and a connection is made. I know you. It happened to me in Denali. Some Someone went, keep your daydream, and I turned around and he goes, no way. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Yeah, it was really it was funny. funny. So how do you swipe up one of these shirts? You go to keepyourdaydream.com forward slash summer, and that will redirect you to our site where you can grab a shirt, and we have more information over there yes. for you. Yes. Like what are these pins on the shirt all about? And there's a reason behind that. It's to help make the community a little bit smaller, so we want to share that information with you. And yes. as always, a dollar for every shirt is going to go to Outdoor Outreach helping kids that wouldn't otherwise have an awesome summer get out there and do things they've mm -hmm. never done before. Now our second goal is to 
find people in these shirts. Oh That's yeah, like my we're gonna, personal goal. Yes. I, wanna, I wanna come up against it. We um, want selfies, Yes. and we wanna be yes. posting those all summer long. So we are gonna be keeping our eye on, we see someone, yeah. I'm gonna casually come up and be like, hey, nice hey, shirt, hey. nice shirt. So, <laughs> <laughs> That's just a little goal that we have. Yes, that's right? our personal goal. All right, so keeperdaydream.com forward slash summer. Check it out. Only available for the next two weeks. So that's important. The reason we do that is so we can batch them up and all of them go out at one time. Yes, they all fly the coop. Before <laughs> And summertime. they arrive. All right, so that's the whole thing about hashtag summer to remember. Now let's talk about this episode. There is so much going on in this episode because we're going back to cover. and we're picking up Grand Ginger and we're covering all the stuff. What happened with the axle? Do you remember the truck had an axle issue too? We cover that. Yes. Trish gets the rig cleaned up. And oh, anybody who's ever picked up a rig from storage, you know mm -hmm. it's a hot mess. Yes. You have so much cleaning to do and we did it, so. So it's a lot of truck and RV stuff in this episode, yes. but it's what you have to do to get back on the road. So that's yeah. what is going on in this episode. Let's go back into the truck. All right, we are here at the dealer and I'm not nervous necessarily, but I'm, I, I kind of have that nervous energy. Do you, Trish? We haven't seen Grand Ginger since October. And now we're picking it up. And I think I'm I'm think I'm excited about season seven. I'm excited to see how the updates went. Maybe I'm maybe I'm a little nervous that things didn't get done correctly and we don't have time to resolve. Anyhow, we're here. So let's let's look for her. Almost as if they didn't know we were coming. So when we got the awning fix on Ginger One before we went to Mexico, and we had a pickup scheduled at Orangewood RV, it was washed and backed up in the shade with all the other rigs ready for pickup. That's not what's happening here today. We're 33 minutes into sitting in the car, waiting. I say we go on a little Easter egg hunt and find her. And just hook up and, and go. And just figure it out on our own. Oh, man, it's brutal. Why is it bouncing like that? It's just filthy. What are we gonna do about the fridge? It should be on. Oh, propane, huh? We're probably out of propane. It's kind of chilly, but it needs to be turned on. Well, I'm sure we're out of propane. I could check. Anyway, so let me just take this off here. I think this is the customer's job to peel off the work order, right? Yeah. Isn't that a customary? <laughs> Hey, your trailer's ready, it's out front. See ya. Take it from there. <laughs> Take it from there. Let's go. I wanna go nice and slow. I wanna listen. Just make sure everything's good. I have not backed the trailer up since October. So November, December, January, February. That's four months. Four months. Let's see how I do. did a good job. Well, we just made a mistake. Why? We're RVing again, aren't we? <laughs> Let me show you what happened. Okay. You know, someone someone warned me about this, but we had been RVing for like 12, no, like 20,000 miles with this hitch and it's never happened until now. Look at that. It ripped it straight out. This cord is so long that it got up under here. Remember when it said trailer uh, disconnected? Yes. It yanked it right out of there. Oh, that's so sad because that like just happened. It just happened. Welcome back to the RV. Keep your daydream making new content <laughs> every Sunday at seven. <laughs> you know what though? I actually think, I actually think it's gonna be pretty simple. I actually might've just, 
pulled the just, casing out. I might have just fixed it. Look at that, Trish. All right, that'll be three hundred dollars. <laughs> no, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure we need to. I'm sure there's more to it than that. But um, yeah, definitely more to it than that. See, that's all broken now because this clip. So you know, we're leaving for Alabama on Friday. I don't have. I don't know if we're gonna have time to get this fixed. But anyway, the solution for this is to get a zip tie or something to keep it up on top of this hitch. Well, you'd have to be careful though, because that Hensley hitch moves all around too. Well, yeah, there's a way though. Like, see, I could have, I could zip tie it to here oh. to keep it up high, so it doesn't sag down and get ripped and get and 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 avoid this. Darn it. Yeah. Well, you know. Let's see. We're gonna learn something new. Three cold water bottles, because the boys won't have anything cold in another one. I have something pretty gross to show you. Yeah, what do you have? I thought I'd go in here, grab my pants. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> that is so disgusting. How are we so gross? We're not usually super gross, but that's super gross. So anyway, we're going through here. I need to wipe down every single countertop. This thing has been sitting here for, what, two months? Four months. Really? No. Well, it was in front of our house. January, February. Oh, yeah. yeah it okay. was in front of the cabin for that long, yeah. Ginger is just like, I need a little attention before I'm going to go take you across the whole country. Yes. So, um, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to put gloves on before I do this. Oh, look who's home. Tori's here. Hi. What'd you bring? I got salads, pizza, and Dr. Pepper for Carson. Where'd you get the army shirt? It's Becca's. <laughs> bring out the awning real quick. Because yeah. it looks like it's all tangled up. I don't know if we had a bunch of wind. Ooh. Yeah, you go out further. All right, how's it going inside? Overwhelming. Yeah, I, I am too. Yeah, a little overwhelmed. Everything needs to get cleaned and wiped down. It's just disgusting, actually. Yeah. It's really grossing me out. Dust levels are all time high. Yeah. Well, we have nice, let me, um, Let's see these stabilizers because Tori brought us a nice dinner, so let's mm. eat it. This is almost as good as mom's cooking. Oh, really? When you extended out the kitchen slide, did it make any noises? I wasn't paying attention. Well, that's probably a good sign. So we also got a new motor in the slide because it used to come out and go ka-clunk. Oh, yeah, no ka-clunk. Yeah, we're going to cover everything that we did. So I'm really, really rusty, and this is taking forever because I have everything in a different spot. Nothing's where it belongs and it needs oil. A lot of things need oil and grease. So this is a week of getting everything back up to speed. Greased up? Greased up <laughs> because <laughs> we're gonna go from Phoenix to San Antonio to Austin to Northern Alabama. And we're gonna do all of that in like 15 days. Yeah. So once we get on the road, it's just gonna be nothing but driving. And then we're from Alabama back to Arkansas, through the Midwest, down up to Florida, then up to Michigan. It's gonna be a crazy season. All right, I just got out of Buddy's Alignment and Auto Repair. This is a great shop in Scottsdale. It's been here for as long as I can ever remember, which says a lot for a small business. And I talked to Rob, who I presume is the owner, I had a bunch of things for him. First of all, we needed to get the alignment done. I don't know if you remember, but I got hit the day before we left for New Zealand. We were up in Flagstaff and somebody came sliding out of a shopping mall and we look left and we go, this guy's gonna hit us and sure enough he did. Somebody slid out of the parking lot and couldn't stop and then I couldn't stop. He hit a square in the rear wheel and we were a little nervous it caused some damage but there's not much we could do we had to put the truck in storage the next day and we had to get on a flight flight and go to new zealand but uh, obviously we're back and so i grabbed the truck in storage and it turns out we have some alignment issues put it on a grid yeah in so many words mm -hmm. see that angle where it's stressed off that way yeah so the rear axle is sitting in there like this yeah okay see that positive number and that severe negative number yep so that means that this entire axle is shifted. Mm -hmm. But the bigger thing is, is that if I subtract those two, okay, and I just like, so I look at this and I look at the rear of it, okay, this should be straight yeah. as far as toe. Mm -hmm. The specification, they don't show one, but it should be zero. Yeah. And it's gonna need a new axle. So Rob quoted somewhere around three grand I, of course, am going to reach back out and see if we can go through the 
insurance company, the guy that hit me, and hopefully we don't have any issues with the fact it's been super long. I also talked to Rob about the issue that I just created yesterday, backing into the site. So he didn't have one of these in stock, so I'm gonna go over to Ford, see if he can have one and try to fix this. Otherwise, I'm probably gonna just clamp it together so we can get on the road. All right. You know, that experience at Ford reminds me that people make all the difference. Very nice gentleman inside there. Has a smile on his face. Looks you in the eye. Holds his calls while he's talking to me. It's the simple things like that that make me happy. Anyhow, so he is gonna have this part here in a couple hours. It's $95. There's a loom that this is connected to. I confirmed that the loom is actually has a, a snap that's broken inside, not a snap, a clip that's broken in there. So he's gonna order the entire assembly. I'm gonna pull the seven wires out the back and put it in the new one and then clip, 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 and we're gonna be fixed. Oh, it looks like someone's been busy here, maybe decluttering. Yeah? What's going on? Welcome! Oh man, this place is spotless. Yeah. Look at it. Okay, couple things. First of all, yes. when you go and you decide that you're gonna clean the entire rig, it's very important to go through your makeup and try on every eyeliner <laughs> and eyebrow pencil you have. Is that what's going on here? That's what's going on here. Okay. Yep, I'm just trying to decide what to throw away. It may be messy here, but every single thing has been wiped down, disinfected, taken out, tossed if it's old, all the spices, all the oils. You know, you don't want mm. nasty mm -hmm. oils. That's the worst. Mm -hmm. So oils had to go. Vinegars, if you hold them up to the light, they start looking like kombucha. Yes. That's bad. <laughs> So those had to go. So anyway, but everything's getting wiped down. The counters are the last. Gotcha. Thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So anyway, but everything has been decomposed. What do they call it when they take a fancy salad and they like, they put it in sections? I forgot what it's called anyway. Someone knows what I'm talking about. Anyway, you take everything out, throw away half of it, put it back. The best time to go through your things, I have to look like a mess. The best time to go through your things is when you've been away from them because you're like, I actually don't need these things. Did you think that you would have to throw things away once you moved into a rig? You do. You collect <laughs> no, things. It's crazy, isn't it? Yes. Okay, now let's talk about all the things that were done at the dealer under warranty because that's been a big question that we've been getting is whatever happened to the axle and how his Grand Ginger held up with one year of full timing. All right, I thought I'd get down here to talk about the axle because that is the big question. What happened to the axle? So right out of the gate, let's talk about what it's not. There were a lot of people that thought the shop that I went to jacked up the rig with by putting the floor jack directly under the axle, and that's just bad recording on my part. So let me show you some footage of a little bit further away where they put the entire rig on four floor jacks. So the entire rig was elevated on those floor jacks. Then they removed the leaf spring bolts to lower down the axle so there was no weight on the axle whatsoever. Then after they installed the SER 4000, they used the floor jack to line up the axle uh, leaf springs with the bolt pattern. So that's what was going on there. Now I know that it looked like there was a bend in the axle, but that's actually normal. Axles have a bit of a crown. The issue with this axle is that the crown was offset from center. It was, it was bent a little bit to the right, which was weird. And if you ask me, it was like that from the very beginning and it could have been concealed by the Hensley hitch and the fact that I replaced the tires halfway through uh, the time I started noticing that there was tire wear. Now, Dexter said that the rig was overweight. So the first thing I did is took the rig into a cat scale. And if you've been watching KYD for a while, you'll know that I go to cat scales as a hobby. And I confirmed that we were under the axle ratings on the rig. But I will admit, we are over the axle rating when we're full water. Now it's very rare that we would be full water, but in Alaska, on several occasions, we did go to full. Uh, not on a drive day, we would, never, we would never go full water and then do an entire drive day. But if we knew that we were gonna be dry camping, we would go to a particular location, we'd fill water, and then we would reposition to a campsite. Uh, do I think that we hit something uh, so severe that we would bend the axle in those conditions? No, but it's a possibility. Regardless of all the conspiracy and what I think it is and whatnot, Grand Design covered it anyway, so that's pretty cool. 
Okay, check this out. This is one of the upgrades that I had the dealer do. I put a valve right here at the end because what was happening is we were driving and when we get to the destination and I would hook up the sewer hose, I would turn that to find a little bit of gray, let's hope, came out. And I was kind of tired of that happening. So I put the valve right here. So I've got the gray and the black valves right here that I pull, but I pull this first once I'm attached, let whatever came out from traveling, and then I pull. The dealer cost charged two hundred and eighty nine dollars to get this done, which I think is a little obscene. It's pretty simple. I bet you could do it yourself for a lot cheaper just buy this part in an RV store. But uh, it is something worth looking into. Okay, so our main slide had an issue where when we were bringing the slide out, it would kind of hop and go clunk. It was fairly disconcerting when we were in Alaska. So we had them uh, check it out, and it turns out they replaced the slide motor. If you have a towable RV with the electric scissor jack system, then you might have these switches right here that retract or extend the jacks. And in our last rig, Ginger 1.0, uh, they ended up failing. And in this rig, both of them ended up failing. So uh, they ended up replacing these switches, both of them. And they also replaced the motor and the arms of the front scissor system. And I have no idea why they, do, why they did that. It wasn't on the list, but I happened to see when we picked it up that it was new. So that's another thing that was covered. We had a couple little minor things like a tail light in the back of the rig ended up having to be replaced and then our USB ports above the master bed have never worked since day one so we brought that up and that was fixed too. So ultimately when we picked up the rig from the dealer our bill was only for the new valve on the sewer line that we put in which was $289. Everything else was covered. Now the question is if you are out of your manufacturer's warranty, should you get an extended warranty, we would suggest that you strongly look into it at least because if you have a towable RV, you're probably gonna, and you're gonna, and you're gonna keep it for a while, you're probably gonna come out ahead. If you have a motorized RV, I think it's probably essential, but we've never had a motorized RV, so I can't speak to that. Uh, we have been partners with Wholesale Warranty from before even the channel started, Trish interviewed the owner, and so they do a great job taking care of the KYD community, so you can check out that link. There's a link down below. That breaks down everything that we got done on warranty, so now let's go back and try to figure out what's going on with the new thing that I broke. All right, let me show you this right here. This is the new plug that I got from Ford for $35, and it even has a little bit of electrical grease on the pins right there. So this will fit in here like this, and you see it has the new clips right here, and those clips will clip on right here, so that'll be firm. But the problem is, I've lost the little clip inside there to snap this. So my solution for that is once I get this in here right, like this, I thought I would just drill a little self-tapping screw in right here and just see if I can do it in a spot where it doesn't get into anything electrical find a blank spot that'll prevent this from coming off the back and then i can snap snap that back in place that's the plan at least screwing into here well it looks like there's plenty of room and i got i got a variety of screws so that i could i could just make sure it wasn't going to go in Good. So now, let's clip this into place. There we go. I think I might have just found a solution to my cable thing. I got this little guy, which is the clip to make sure that the tongue doesn't, the tongue lever doesn't come up. And when I put the cord through that, it centers it. And as you can see, it makes it, it kind of just centers it on the hitch. So right now I'm just trying to think through reasons why this might be a problem, but I can't think of one because the way the Hensley hitch works, all of the movement is below here. This stays stationary because it's held in place by these struts. So this, this really won't move. All of that moves and it keeps it, it keeps it up above it. Might be a, pro a proper solution here. So the work unfortunately is not over. The 
water pump is not working. And I went to the KYD Insider's Facebook page and got some input from everyone. And So the water pump is behind there. So I'm gonna have to get this out and get behind there. Hi, how are you? Cold. Cold? Yes. It's 46 minutes later. How was it? It was a lot of fun. Yeah? Yes. What did you go and do? You ready? I went out to um, dinner with a friend. You ready to go to Tucson? I'm ready to go drive? You ready yes. to start season seven? <laughs> at, seven. At, at quarter to nine? At quarter to nine at night, let's go do it. No better time. So Carson doesn't fit up in that top bunk anymore? Carson no longer fits up there. So, I'm sure there was plenty of people that were in the Navy that had to sleep in the bunks and they're like, Carson can fit in there. But he really can't. <laughs> He's like this. It is tight. And then if he rolls over, he just falls out. So, anyways, we're gonna make it. Well, we're there. also not in a submarine. <laughs> It's not wartime. No, it's not. Oh, so we're at Casino del Sol, and I've never seen so many RVs ever. Just incredible. In fact, someone's running their generator. It's 11 o'clock at night. We're gonna go to bed, and we have some stuff we want to bring it to speed on tomorrow, and we'll do that in the cab of the truck. We're gonna get a good night's sleep. Maybe wake up early and edit, and get on the road. Big drive tomorrow morning.